listening to the We Are Worship USA podcast. I love it when it's that organic family. Everyone's bringing something. I just at one point made a decision that the kind of worship leader I want to be is one that doesn't really separate the stage and the private times with the Lord. To see Jesus Christ and we're going to worship Him and that's what this whole thing is all about. It's just about Him. Everybody. Welcome to the We Are Worship podcast. My name is Morgan, and I'm here with my co-host <laughs> and boss, What's the Moon. Uh, I feel like whenever you do the like intro, yeah, and welcome people, I feel like we're like watching a like one of those gaming shows or oh, something. Yeah. I would totally <laughs> Price is like Riot or Family something. Feud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Move over, Steve Harvey, because I'm coming. I'm coming your way. <laughs> Yeah, uh, how was your Easter? Um, it was grand. Grand. Yeah, it was really good. How was yours? It was good, but not as eventful as yours. Oh yeah, because you were like chasing rabbits or something like that. Yeah, something like that, or turkeys. <laughs> turkeys. Turkeys. <laughs> Don't you have a dog named Turkey? <laughs> I do have a dog named Charky. Oh. <laughs> I hope you were hunting him down. <laughs> Yeah, so I was, um, it was for anybody who hunts, I don't know if you do, if you do, that's great, um, <laughs> but in Tennessee, it was opening weekend of turkey season, mm. so there's... See, I always thought, like, you can kill turkeys whenever and wherever no. you see them, that's no. not true. No, there's a spring season and a okay. fall season. Okay. So you can only kill them in those specific times mm. that the... <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to go into it, because then I'm going to sound like a, like an outdoors nerd, like a hunting nerd, and I'm not. I just know a lot because of my boyfriend, so I'm just going to stop there. So the important question is, did you kill any? Well, I shot at it. You shot at a turkey. But I didn't kill it. <laughs> on purpose, or? Uh, yeah, on purpose. You kinda... Really? On purpose, missed No, turkey. no, oh. no. <laughs> No, I shot at it on purpose, but I didn't miss it on purpose. Oh, okay. <sighs> yeah, I don't. Uh, it was it was bad. It was one of those situations where, like, if you could have like messed up at any point, that wasn't the point to mess <laughs> up. But I did it. I messed up at the point. Uh, I was I didn't need to mess up anyway. But so, that was that your first time like, hunting? Yeah, them? yeah, it was my first time. Like actually. Like aiming and trying to shoot at a turkey because I've been turkey hunting before, but we never saw any birds. This mm. time we saw birds and they came right to the decoys, and I mm. got ready and a shot in a mist. Well, that's not bad for your first time. Yeah, like, at least you shot the yeah. gun, not yeah, at a person. Like, oh, <laughs> shot ne- towards never, <laughs> no, never. I would be so like <laughs> you should have like if you were me, my heart was pounding and racing, and like you get so anxious about it. And I can imagine doing that to anything other than like an animal that you're you're gonna eat. I like food, so you know God provided those birds out there for me to eat. Uh-huh. So that's the only thing I'll be shooting at. <laughs> yeah, and of course it was Easter weekend, and um, we got some great engagement on social media. Uh, we had a meme about mm-hmm. like people, you know, taking naps after leading worship on Easter Sunday and like people were tagging their worship team and it was fun to watch that and you know just people going oh yeah that was totally mm-hmm, me mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you were uh, leading worship um, or even a part of the tech team or you know part of any of the services at your church um, thank you for what you do yeah. because that's um, a draining day for you know anybody involved mm-hmm. I mean I've seen churches who normally have like three or four services do nine services oh, yeah. you know, over the weekend i i can't even imagine no like i i feel like you would need nine different teams to do that. and nine days to recover yeah yeah, yeah. so like count me out for the next sunday because yeah. i'm gonna be asleep yeah because you prepare pretty much the whole week too and then yeah. you know you're like serving all weekend so Hopefully you have some time to rest and recover and get refreshed. So, yeah, thanks for what you guys do. So we've also um, got some exciting things happening on We Are Worship. We've got a whole new list of free songs. Hmm. And one of those free songs is Build My Life from Soul Survivor. So I thought it might be kind of cool to take a listen to it. All right. You're going to sing it? Yeah. Sing. 
a great song i love that mm-hmm. one um yeah. it's one of those that i've been playing in my car for the longest time and like mm-hmm. i catch myself on the interstate just like worshiping and then people are looking yeah. at you like Whoa, what's that crazy person doing <laughs> um but we also have a free hymn of the month which is a mighty fortress from brad and rebecca and we have a classic song of the week which is jesus thank you from sovereign grace music awesome And today we have a special interview with our good friend, Dustin Smith. He's been on our podcast a couple of uh, times before, but this time he's here to talk about a special tour that we are doing Mm -hmm. for the very first time. And we actually, as we're recording this today is April 2nd, we actually just released the official promo video for it which ironically Dustin is the voiceover for it. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll get to hear Dustin talk about it here and in the video. And if you want to watch the video, go to We Are Worship TV on YouTube or We Are Worship USA on Facebook. Um, but we really look forward to seeing you guys if you're in the area. And if you're not, you can uh, check our website, weareworshiptour.com for future dates in the coming months. Hey, today I'm here with everybody's friend, Mr. Dustin Smith. I totally thought you were going to say somebody else. (laughs) (laughs) You're not everybody's friend. (laughs) No, I have have some huge enemies. (laughs) Okay. We don't uh, need to talk about that on this podcast. If you hate Dustin, email him (laughs) at Dustin at Email, we don't care at (laughs) weareworship.com. This is a great start to the podcast. Yeah. So, welcome back to the podcast. Yeah, thanks, man. It's great. <laughs> so, what's been a, a highlight for you since that we last had you on the podcast? So, there was this restaurant I went to. Had a- I knew it was going to be <laughs> Oh, and this amazing steak is probably really? the best, oh, best wow. filet I've ever had. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, and then like months of, <laughs> since you've been on the podcast, <laughs> that's the highlight. <laughs> hey, man. Well, I've got several food places I've been since then. So. And at the end of this podcast, if you listen, we'll have an advertisement for them. So it, uh, I'm just kidding. So we're, we're actually here actually to talk about a food tour you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> in May. Well, there's a good chance I could pull that off. <laughs> And more people would show up. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going to uh, 10 cities? Yeah, 10 um, cities. Plus Nashville. Yep. It's kind of like a tour. diner's drive-ins and dives is okay. what it's going to be. It's, that's, that's the awesome. whole goal. It's Man, just, yeah. that's amazing. We'll so, find some place that he's going to We actually had you actually speak at the Nashville Worship Leaders Appreciation Lunch we did last month. Um, and you shared about Nehemiah and the wall, yeah. the building of the wall, and... Um, Malcolm and JB, who's a part of Integrity, they also share their heart for um, just seeing, wanting to see God move, you know, in worship and in churches. And uh, it was just a really powerful and inspiring time. Yeah. 
And part of that um, conversation kind of leads to what's coming up in May. Um, it will involve food. It, will. <laughs> it has to. People won't show up if you don't have food. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, tell us a little bit about, like, what is this tour? Okay. So we're going to do 10 cities. Mm. And really, it was I love it because JB, when he first called and said, I want to do this, his thing was like, can we find places that – you know, they may not be major cities, but where we have friends and relationships mm. of guys already doing things with other worship leaders and other teams. Mm. Cause our, our heart isn't to promote a label and our heart isn't to just try to get one church involved. Our heart is to find a city come alive. And I really believe that worship can lead the charge in that, you know, because one of the things that worship does, is, especially I think when you think about it, even in your own congregation, when you lead a song, it's probably the only time that week that they're not thinking about something else. Mm. They're not thinking about their own thing. It's the one time we focus and we all have the same message. It's the one time, even if we like it or not, even the key, the song that we're singing, the mm. key that it's in, the melodies, the harmonies, they all work together. Mm. And if you were to stand out and you were to just listen to the voices with no instruments, it would sound like one voice. Mm. There's just a powerful thing about music that causes us to become one voice with one message, yeah. you know, and it's just unifying. And so for us, we know the power of music, we know mm. the power of songs, but we know the power of worship in our own lives. So we want to go into cities. And what we did was we really went around. I went with with Jacob or with, J, with JB and Malcolm and uh, Clayton, and we went out and we met with with some key leaders mm -hmm. of the cities, and then we met with a group of maybe twenty five other worship leaders and some of their team, and just presented an idea of like, hey, what if we came in and we through the day we taught, we did some teaching and, and we did, and we had some of you teach and mm. we talk about what is the sound of this region? What mm. does this neat region need? And how do we help develop that? And our goal isn't to come in and teach you what to think. Mm. It's try to inspire you to think, yeah. <laughs> you know, think again. Cause a lot, for a long time we've stopped. We've kind of relied on what other people have just told us. And we kind of rely on other people to write our songs for us, which is not bad at all. Mm -hmm. I love a lot of the songs coming out from different movements and, so it's not a complaint about the songs that are coming out. What it is, is sometimes we start relying on them and forget we have our own voice mm. and, and our church has its own voice. One of the things JB says is that he found out that churches always sing their own songs the loudest. So it yeah. may not be a song you even write, but it's a song that you own, mm -hmm. you know? And so for me, what we want to do is go into cities and we have 10 cities that we're going to travel to and we want to throw gasoline on their fire, mm -hmm. you know? And some, some people are just tired, they're worn out. And then we want to be a connector of other people in the city. Some, yeah. of, some of you are in your city and you've never met another worship leader in your city. And we want to change that. We want to help change that. And maybe we can come in and help maybe connect some people that haven't been connected before. And I love JB's vision too, because he wants to come back for the next five years. He wants to invest in a city mm -hmm. and in places. And some of the places are people places people never heard of, you know, like Joplin, Missouri. Yeah. Uh, we know great things are happening in Joplin, Missouri, yeah. but it's not some place that you would go, oh man, I can't wait to go to Joplin. They have great you know? steak. Right. Great. Oh, there are some good <laughs> restaurants there. I could promise you. Everywhere we're going has some good food. I promise. <laughs> we'll have that list out. Uh, but the cool thing is, is that you know, they've been really crying out for their city for a long mm. time and unifying their the the group that's out there, next gen worship, they've been they've been pulling people together, probably 30, 40 churches that are doing these worship things together. They're meeting in their living rooms and worshiping together. And so we want to be able to tell that story. Yeah. And so we want to go in and we want to find out what is happening here. Yeah. How can we help empower it? And then we want to help tell your story in these other cities. And every yeah. city has a story. You know what's cool want to is Clint was actually on our podcast. Oh, that's right. Yeah. To yeah. talk about it. So it's cool to like actually go there oh, that's and amazing. be a part of that. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's it's amazing. And here's the cool thing. Like a study, uh, I don't know, a report came out that Joplin, it, I don't know if it was a couple years ago or this year, that Joplin came out as like one of the most creative cities in the U.S. Oh, or wow. something like that, or artistic cities yeah. in the U.S. And who would think Joplin? But I told them last time I was there, you guys are probably one of the ones that helped create mm, that atmosphere. Nobody yeah. realizes that. Wow. But they got worship leaders together, and they started praying over their city mm. and worshiping and writing songs for it and all this. Well, that opened up creativity That's over the awesome. city, and now even secular venues are starting wow. to recognize it, yeah. and it's starting to pour into Joplin, and I think it was actually led mm. you know, by the church.
Man, that's amazing, and that's really powerful. And just he- hearing like you share like your heart, um, and Malcolm and JB, and JB actually heads up um, Integrity and We Are Worship. He's like the um, head of like, everything, yeah, he's like the Godfather. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people actually don't know, but We Are Worship was like JB's brainchild. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah, to see like. This tour is actually called the We Are Worship Tour, um, and like the tagline is Songs of the City. And yeah, we just want to connect with, you know, churches and communities and help um, just equip and inspire them to, you know, write their own songs and even, you know, realize that it's not about the one guy on stage. Yeah. You know, worship isn't about just the worship leader. It's about all of us being involved and all of us. You know, having something to bring, you know, as an offering, and I think that's really biblical. You know, yeah, yeah, and I think that's even like the story behind the song, the heart of worship from you know way back yep. with Matt Redman is, you know, Mike Pulavachi like basically encouraged everybody to bring their own offering, and they started to see God move in a powerful way. Yeah, and I think we just have that desire and passion for that. Yeah. And I love that what you just said. So Mike Pilavachi stopped music in mm-hmm. his church, like for a good amount of time, and said no one's allowed. They had no worship team, no band, and bring a song. Yeah. And for a long time, they had nothing. Yeah. And some people love the church because of it. <laughs> but you know what we have today from that? We have a song mm-hmm. called "The Heart of Worship." The heart of worship reminds us of a story, mm. and a story that goes back to where other people brought stuff. But it didn't remove Matt from the equation, yeah. you know? And so that's the powerful thing is like you can awaken people and God will actually renew destinies in your own lives. Mm-hmm. And one of the reasons that some guys have not stepped into their own destinies is because they have not encouraged others to step into theirs. Mm-hmm. And we want to awaken churches. It's not just about songwriting. It's about being a worshiper. Songwriting will be the overflow of your worship. Mm-hmm. And too long, we haven't had that. And the songs prove it a lot mm-hmm. of times, you yeah. know? We have songs that aren't really speaking. I think the heart of God all the time. I think there's songs that you can tell are just repetitive of what we've heard, but not Mm. what we've lived. And when you can have songs birthed out of what you've lived, when you can have songs birthed out of experience and not just arguments, then you can see things come to life because there's an authority to things that Mm. you've experienced. So a song was birthed out of that moment. And you and I are still talking about it. And that was years ago and it wasn't even our story, (laughs) you know, but but we know it because of a song. And that song is all, I think, Almost every listener probably on here would know the song, The Heart of Worship. And that song's 20 years old or something now, you know, I hate saying that, but, and, but it's, it's really cool to think about it now because we're, now we're seeing that happen in churches. And Mm -hmm. when we were out at these, at these, um, cities, it is amazing to to listen to the stories of the guys that are there Mm -hmm. and to hear some of their songs already. So I know what we're going to get to do is cross pollinate some of these songs, which is what really birthed integrity in the first place Mm -hmm. was finding songs of the church and then telling other churches about those songs, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's what we're worship is about. That's why you have the website and the Mm -hmm. things that you're doing where you're helping people and, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of jaded people out there and a lot of mm. people who are really skeptical of things. One of the first things, you know, you hear from people is like, oh, you want to come in and just tell us how you guys do mm. it and the Nashville thing and all that. And it's just not true because, w- again, when, you know, I've gotten to travel around the world and when I go to Uganda, I don't get Uganda to try to sound like me. Mm. I just try to get them to make a sound. I want. I want to hear their sound. What yeah. is God doing right now in your area? With And they, they use a lot of drums, a lot of things like that. Well, mm. that's what I want to hear. The same thing with our cities. Every city carries a little bit of little different sound, but the authority that we carry should all be the same. Mm -hmm. And the message that we carry should all be the same. When we're going to Huntington, West Virginia, I know that right now there's even a TV show out of, of the, all the deaths that are happening Mm -hmm. because of the, of drugs, illegal drugs, suicides are a a ridiculous rate. Mm -hmm. And we're stepping into probably one of the number one places in the, in the, in the United States that that's happening. And we're going to have a sound arise and it's going to be a sound of hope. Mm -hmm. And if churches can't be the hope in that situation to be the light, then who can? And so we're hoping to go in there and really um, connect and unite and believe that God is going to do something powerful in Huntington, West Virginia. Yeah, that's awesome. So even if you don't live there, you should be praying for that because yeah. that's part of your body. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as a believer, Very true. you should be saying, oh, I'm so glad that's happening in Huntington, West Virginia. Yeah. And that will spill over to other cities. That's awesome. And I think the way I kind of look at this um, tour is 
we're almost like going in and like starting a conversation, a dialogue around, you yeah. know, like this whole concept. And um, I think a lot of our listeners are probably familiar with, you know, going to a conference and what a conference normally looks like. You yeah. know, you sit around like, you know, hundreds or thousands of people. There's a big stage and lights and you know there are speakers and then you maybe do like breakout sessions you know and yeah depending on what topic you want to hear and yeah. all of that so how is that different how or how is this two or different from that well for us our heart was that number one it wouldn't just be leaders but it'd be their teams too because mm. we we think there's a powerful thing that happens when you get to stand with your group yeah. instead of just in front of your group you know like you do every week but this is actually like you said is going to be more conversational we're going to start out really just the first couple hours of really kind of dissecting where do we feel like we're at mm. and we have you know Malcolm's going to share some of that I'll be hosting the day and then we're going to break into lunch and we're all we're actually all the speakers everybody who's speaking michael farron mm -hmm. lisa Corey, all those guys that'll be there um are going to actually sit at the tables with the guys and we're going to have mm -hmm. discussions at the tables because we're we're really not we're really not hoping to have thousands at this we're really yeah. we really would rather just have a couple hundred people that are yeah. committed you know <laughs> to really change their city than mm -hmm. we would have a thousand that come up just to get a little inspiration mm. you know and so we're going to sit at tables and we want to communicate we want to talk we want to you know it's not going to be like there's going to be one table where we're all going to be at and everybody like we're going to spread out to the tables we want to have discussion then we're going to have a round table with people in that community mm. we want to hear from the leaders some of the leaders in that community then we're going to break it down to where it's more ted talk style to where the talks will be about 15 20 minutes each and they'll go right down the list but we'll have a couple from that region that'll be speaking so we're not just mm. coming in and just doing our thing we're actually trying to figure out what is happening in this city what is the sound of this city and then uh, we're gonna have a time where we're gonna we're gonna worship together some, and then we're gonna write a song together. Mm. And Michael Fair and I've done this a couple different places where we'll get up and we'll actually write a song for that city right then in an hour. Yeah, in right. an hour, <laughs> it, in a, and we'll do it. And it's well, funny it's because crazy. people are like, ah, oh, like that. There's no way it's gonna be a good song. Or, <laughs> You'll be surprised. And because of the heart behind it and mm -hmm. what God's trying to do, but we're actually going to, you'll get to see not just how we write a song, but how we, how we find that song, yeah. how we find the sound, how yeah. we find the song. And my thing is I want people to find their voice, not just find a song. I want you to find your voice mm -hmm. again, because even if you're not a songwriter, you need to be a voice to your family. And some of you have lost this. You need to be a voice to your church. You need to be able to have the well up. You know, I hear a lot of people talk about they want God to come into a room, but scripture says from your belly will flow rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not about him coming in as much as it's about him coming out. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so I, I'm a, I'm looking for people to have something that's bubbling up from them. The mm. Bible says, "Out of your heart will, uh, out of out of your heart the mouth speaks." Yeah. So I want people to find that again to where they feel empowered to speak, mm. not just empowered to repeat. And we we we've just been repeaters for so long we forgot. Yeah. God's given us a song, and some people would say, "Well, I don't I don't want to sing you know my song because you've heard these lyrics before, these lines before, but but I've never heard it from you. Mm -hmm. I've never heard it from your testimony or from your experience. Yeah. And so we're gonna write that song, but we're gonna have the input and the help of the whole group because mm -hmm. we want to write the song. Like, what does your city need? Yeah." What do you find it needs? And then we'll end just with a time of worship where we're going to have some of some of their songs, you know. And so some of you in the regions, we'll have a place. We'll have people who are gathering songs in your region, and we'll mm. probably share three or four of those songs from that region. And then we'll we'll just have a time of worship together. Awesome. Yeah, I think you left out the important part of eating together. There will be a meal. You know what though. <laughs> Um, you know, that's not that important. <laughs> uh -huh. I started the whole thing out with food and now I'm like, I'm trying to backpedal a little bit. And people are like, this guy is sick. I thought when you were saying like, something's going to bubble up inside yeah. and come out. I was like, what? <laughs> you know me. Too many beans. <laughs> that's right. No beans at this thing. No way. And uh, obviously, you know, 10 cities isn't going to cover the whole country, but this is a start. I this think. is how we start. Yeah. And, and we wanted to, I know JB's heart is this goes around the world, but yeah. we got to create pictures of it. Yeah. Every time God would speak to his prophet, he'd say, what do you see? Mm. And he's always trying to create pictures of what he wants. And he always starts small. Yeah. So he didn't start with 12 because he wanted it to be 12 guys. Mm. 
You know, he started with 12 to create a picture of what discipleship looks like. Yeah. So discipleship could spread around the world. Mm. And it looks like we're starting small, just maybe, you know, why are you starting so small? Because we're looking to create a picture for around the world of mm. what discipleship can be like. What is it like? The scripture actually says, where brothers dwell in unity, there God commands the blessing. Mm. We're just trying to create a picture of unity. We're trying to create a picture that we're willing to lay our swords down against each other. And we're willing to pick up swords against our enemies, yeah. our mutual enemies. You know, mm. and I feel like it will create a picture where this will spread around the U.S. but around the world too. Yeah, and the cool thing is we're going to um, capture everything on video too for every city and sharing that on WeAreWorship.com so people will get to actually see you know what it looks like and yeah. even like hear the talks and he- even hear the songs that get yeah. written there. So that's awesome. Um, we want to invite you to join us if you're in those areas, and you can see the full list by going to WeAreWorshipTour.com. Um, and then we'll, you know, let you know through social media and our newsletter, just uh, all the updates. And Dustin and JB and Malcolm du- Duplissy, is that how you say sure. his last name? <laughs> sure. I heard him say it's kind of like two plus three. So two plus- if you, <laughs> okay, if you kind of just slow right. that two plus three, uh, <laughs> that's what I do every time. <laughs> yeah. They'll write uh, a personal note in our newsletter in the coming weeks too, just to share their heart about this tour and. Uh, so we're really excited to be doing this, and this is really the first time we're doing something to this capacity. And I don't, I think this is the first time anybody's really done anything. I've like never this. heard of anything. Like, I've been in church my whole life, and I've never, and and nobody with the heart that like mm. JB has of yeah. like just. I mean, he's just set in tears. Like I want to see yeah. God do something in local churches. Yeah, and that's the heart of this. And I know there's been a lot of you know, conferences, a lot of things. This is this doesn't have to do with them those and things not being important yeah but this is different and and i think it's going to be really impacting yeah so we'll share more information and some video clips of like even dustin and malcolm and jb talking about the tour um on weareworshiptour.com so um and if we're not going to your city this time um you can cat you know catch all the videos there um and on, on our website we'll be sharing more content so be praying for us. Be praying for the team because it's a five day stretch each time, yep. right? Um, in May, the last couple of weeks of May. So yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Thanks for listening to We Are Worship. We would love to hear from you. You can email us your comments to hello at weareworshipusa.com. And don't forget to visit us online at weareworship.com for more resources and links to connect with us on your favorite social media platforms. 